What's up, Taiwan? I'm Yvonne Young with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Taiwan has pledged an additional aid package worth 56 million U.S. dollars to Ukraine. It was announced at a friendship reception for Ukraine in Taipei. Bing Wang was there. Here at the Taipei Guest House, the Taiwan Foreign Ministry is hosting a friendship reception for Ukrainian lawmakers. The two countries have grown closer ever since the Russian invasion of Ukraine earlier this year. Taiwanese people have turned out in large numbers to support Ukraine in their war with Russia. And the government here added its voice to the global condemnation of Moscow. The Taiwanese people raised nearly 33 million U.S. dollars for Ukraine relief efforts. And at the reception, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu made another pledge. That the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has already come up with a budget approved by our cabinet at amount of around 56 million U.S. dollars. It's going to be used to continue to provide support to Ukraine. While Taiwan has provided material assistance, Ukrainian lawmaker Kira Rudik says her country also appreciates the moral support. Well, I would like to start with the huge gratefulness and love from people of Ukraine. It is so amazing that people literally from the other side of the world feel your pain and feel your fight and feel your struggle and support you with that. We do appreciate it and we will never forget this. Her sentiments were echoed by other Ukrainian officials. Taiwanese people are our spiritual brothers and sisters, and we are really very thankful to your people for helping us, because um, we really uh, feel this support. Hopko also said Taiwan can learn from Ukraine in case of an attack by China. And for Taiwanese friends, I would say you have to learn from Ukraine how to build territorial defense system when everyone knows how to defend. Also how to counter Russian disinformation, not to allow Russian to use toxic propaganda. Much like Ukraine, Taiwan has its own much larger and aggressive neighbor on its own, intent on destroying its way of life. And through this reception, they hope to build stronger and longer lasting ties with Ukraine. James Rayner and Bing Wong in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. A mud volcano in southern Taiwan's Pindong County has erupted, destroying fields of red beans that were just weeks from harvest. It's the third eruption this year. This time, the mud not only buried crops, but also devastated the soil quality due to its sulfur content. <laughs> The U.S., Japan, and South Korea are warning of a decisive response if North Korea conducts a nuclear test. The trio of vice foreign ministers say they are bolstering their defense cooperation to deter the growing possibility of Pyongyang using nuclear weapons. North Korea hasn't tested a nuclear weapon since 2017, but there are concerns it could soon start testing them again. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin has overseen the country's first nuclear drill since the war in Ukraine began. The exercise involved missiles, submarines, and war plans, and were intended to simulate a nuclear strike by Russia in retaliation for a nuclear attack on the country. The drills come aim at Russian claims that Ukraine is preparing to use a dirty bomb, a bomb that contains radioactive material, in a false flag attack to blame Russia. NATO has also been holding nuclear exercises. A milestone in represent representation and diversity in U.S. currency. Actor Anna Mae Wong is the first ever Asian American to be featured on a coin. Eric Gall reports. Freshly minted, these coins are the first in the United States to have the image of an Asian American on them, actor Anna Mae Wong. It's part of a series being produced by the U.S. Mint to honor influential women in the country's history. Women who were pioneering, women who were trailblazing, women who made a difference, women who persevered. And there's no one as important as uh, many other women but Anna Mae Wong. When you think about Anna Mae Wong, she was the first Asian-American actress, 60 films under her credit. 
She, in fact, not only starred in silent film and TV, but also in theater. She made a difference and she changed the dynamics of entertainment for Asian Americans. By honoring women in U.S. history, the Mint hopes to inspire future generations to learn more about these important individuals. We get to, as artists, take three-dimensional geometry, um, create a beautiful piece of artwork, right, that maybe a thousand years from now, somebody will either dig up, might find in a museum, and the curiosity from what they see might drive them to learn about something or um, figure out what the reasoning was behind a coin. And from that, they might, yeah, you know, educate themselves on anime Wong or, you know, Wil uh, Wilma Mankiller or like a Hobita Adar. They're, it's just a, it's just an amazing, you know, snapshot um, in time. The coin's entire design is dedicated to women. While the reverse side still features George Washington, this version was made by Laura Garden Fraser in 1931. When people hold this coin in their hands, it is absolutely uh, a fully um, immersive experience of American women in the United States history, both as artists and, and as heroes. Uh, a woman sculpted the obverse, the portrait of George Washington. She's a, an artist and a hero for her time, especially. And then every single reverse tells a different story about a different great American that some people either know very well or some people are just newly finding, discovering. So it's, it's an incredible program. Anna May Wong's quarter is among the first in a series that will span multiple years. As the coins circulate across the country, more people will learn of the legacy of this groundbreaking woman. Klein Wong and Eric Gao for Taiwan Plus. German tech conglomerate Merck has opened a new facility in southern Taiwan's Kaohsiung city. The plant is a manufacturing hub for semiconductor materials. It is part of Merck's more than 500 million U.S. dollar expansion into Taiwan, announced last year. The investment plan is expected to create 400 jobs. Kaohsiung Mayor Chen Ximai was at the opening ceremony. The island of Xiaoliu Chou could introduce a tourism fee for two of its ecological hotspots. The coral island off Taiwan's southwest coast is popular because of the rich, the rich marine life around its shores. But ecologists worry that the end of COVID restrictions could bring a damaging influx of visitors. The tourism fee of around two U.S. dollars would be used to protect the ecosystem. The Taipei Zoo has placed 18-year-old panda Tuan Tuan in palliative care as his, his condition worsens. MRI scans show that the lesions in his brain have expanded, which indicates a higher chance of a malignant brain tumor. The lesions were first discovered in August, and Tuan Tuan received treatment then. He appears to be improving, but his condition worsened earlier this month. Taipei Zhu says an invasive biopsy would be needed to find the exact cause of his illness, but they can't do such a procedure because he has adverse reactions to anesthesia. Tuan Tuan is getting medication to ease his symptoms, and caretakers are giving him more of his favorite food to boost his appetite. Thank you for watching what Taiwan, What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from here in Taiwan and around the world. Finally, today, we leave with the images with the autumn leaves in Canada. As experts say, a combination of specific weather factors has made the leaves more vibrant than usual. I'm Yvonne Young. Take care and see you next time. <laughs>